the grouchy nerd. Alright, quiet down, knuckleheads. It's time to take another look at a new hero pack for Fantasy Flight Games Marvel Champions. This time we're looking at Storm. If you're just joining us for the first time, I'm first going to take a look at her hero cards, and then I'm going to go over the new player cards that came in the pack, not the reprints. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some final thoughts. Aurora Monroe is descended from an ancient line of African priestesses, though she was born in Manhattan. However, her family moved to Egypt when she was just a baby. When she was five years old, a plane crashed into her house, killing her parents and trapping her under rubble for several days, leaving her with a lifelong struggle with crippling claustrophobia. Orphaned, she took up with the Gang of Thieves, where she became an exceptional pickpocket as well as lockpick. Charles Xavier first became aware that Aurora was a powerful mutant when she failed to pick his pocket. She escaped when Charles was psionically attacked by the Shadow King, a mutant who ruled over all the thieves in Cairo. Around the age of 12, she was overcome with an urge to leave Cairo and spent time wandering the Sahara Desert, during which time her mutant powers, the ability to control control the weather began to develop. She used those powers to rescue the Prince of Wakanda, T'Challa, and eventually found her way to her ancestral home in the Kilimanjaro Valley in Kenya, where she was worshipped as a goddess by local tribes. Having no reason to doubt them, she too believed that she was in fact a weather goddess. Years later, she was aided by the X-Men and eventually recruited to the X-Men by Charles Xavier, who explained to her that she was a mutant and not a goddess, giving her the codename Storm. Since then, she's led the X-Men, she's led the Morlocks, and under ground group of mutants, lost her powers, got them back, married T'Challa and became the Queen of Wakanda, joined the Fantastic Four, became an Avenger, divorced T'Challa, and became the voice of Sol, the ambassador of our solar system in the Galactic Council. I don't know, from a street urchin to a galactic ambassador? Are we sure she's not just at least a little bit goddess? Let's dig in. On her hero side is Storm, who thwarts for one, attacks for two, and defends for one. She gets the X-Men trait and a hand size of five and ten health. And once per round, she can use Weather Control to swap a weather support in play with your choice of another card from her weather deck and resolve that special ability. We'll take a closer look at that deck in a second, but it's sort of like Doctor Strange's Invocation deck and Spectrum's Forms had a baby. A conceptual baby. Aurora Monroe is Storm's alter ego. She gets a recovery of only three, six cards in hand, and the mutant trait. She begins the game with her weather deck. Choose a card from that deck and put it into play. Okay, so before we take a look at it, the weather deck is called a deck, but it doesn't really work the way other decks in the game do. Only one card from the deck will ever be in play at a time, and when you swap them, you're always going to be able to choose which one you're swapping into, so it's not really like hidden information. So cards that target a deck like Cosmo aren't going to be able to target the weather deck. Also, they all have the permanent keyword, which does technically mean that they can't ever leave play, but they've updated the permanent keyword to say that if you're swapping a card with permanent from the same set of cards with permanent, that counts. Which is all to say that there will always be a weather card in play. Good? Good. First is Clear Skies. Each character gains Stalwart, and the special on it is to draw one card. Hurricane is next. Each character gains Retaliate 1, and the special is Remove 2 Threat from a Scheme. Then we have Thunderstorm. Each character gets plus 1 to their attack, and the special is Deal 2 Damage to an Enemy. And last up is Blizzard. Each character gets minus 1 attack, and the special allows you to treat one non-elite minion as though its text box was blank. Now do take note there, it doesn't say friendly characters. This is going to happen to every character on the board. The villain, minions, your allies, if you're playing with another hero, that hero plus all of their allies, everybody gets whatever the thing is. So if you lay out Thunderstorm and give everybody plus one attack, you better make sure that that's going to do you more good than it's going to do the villain. Or calling on Clear Skies, which draws you a card, which is of course great, but then you can't lay out a stun or confuse on the villain or a minion, or if they already have stun or confuse, Clear Skies is going to make you discard that stun or confuse, because now they've got Stalwart. Storm's Crown is a two-cost item upgrade. It gives Storm plus one to her thwart, and you can exhaust it to generate the resource on the current weather support. That's great. Her thwart is only at one, so getting this into play as early as possible is going to be amazing, and it's going to get you an extra resource every round. Storm's Cape is a three-cost upgrade, which gives Storm plus one to her defense and gets her aerial, and it gives her the hero response after you resolve the special on your current weather support. Exhaust this to ready Storm. I love a cape! They're all good. You can swap the weather and use its special as your hero ability, so you're always going to reliably have a way to ready once this is in play. 
That's great. Aurora's Garden is a one-cost location support as an alter ego exhaust it to heal two damage. Yeah, that three recover isn't great. This helps this helps a lot. Then we get three copies of a zero-cost event, Weather Goddess. It's a superpower, and as a hero, it lets you swap out weather cards and resolve the special on the new one. That's great. So you can already change the weather once with your hero ability. This is going to let you change it back again, so you can give yourself the plus one to attack, do all your attacking, and then flip back to minus one attack for when the villain attacks you. And then you get to ready with your cape. Another superpower event is next. Three copies of Torrential Rain. This one is a thwart event. As a hero, remove three threat from among schemes in play. If Hurricane is in play, resolve its special ability, which was removing two threat. And remember, when you change to the Hurricane, you're also going to get to use its special. So this has the potential of getting you seven threat off, and it can be from multiple schemes. That's so good. Next, we get two copies of Lightning Bolt, a three-cost superpower attack event. As a hero, deal eight damage to an enemy. If Thunderstorm is in play, resolve its special, which was doing two damage. And if you flipped into Thunderstorm this round with this card, you're going to end up doing 12 damage. Two copies of Flash Freeze is next. It's a one-cost superpower defense event. When the villain attacks, the villain and each minion engage with you get minus three to their attack. If Blizzard is in play, resolve its special ability, which was blanking out a non-elite minions text box, which is probably the least useful special, but it does allow you to ignore guard and patrol if you need to, and that's very useful. On the other hand, that minus three to the attack is always good. The villain is probably going to still do a little bit of damage. I mean, they're still going to get to boost their attack, but it's going to be pretty manageable, and most minions aren't going to do anything to you. Last up is two copies of Blast of Wind, a three-cost superpower event. Choose a player. Deal three damage to the villain and each minion engaged with that player. Resolve the special on the current weather support. So with no minions out, this kind of sucks. Three damage for three resources is pretty bad, though that's not to say it's not necessarily still worth playing if there are no minions. You're going to get the special on the weather, which could be really key if you need to pull off two more threat. Plus, that's going to get you to ready if you have the cape out. On the other hand, if there are minions, and there are maybe a few minions, this is incredible value. Plus, it's really cool for you multiplayer or multi-handed players that you can play this on another player. That's awesome. The bad stuff. Storm's obligation is claustrophobia. You must flip to Aurora, and you cannot flip back to Storm until you exhaust to remove this from the game. Luckily, given that low defense, you're probably not going to be relying too much on her to defend, so you're probably going to be ready when you draw this, but if you're not, and you have to flip down to Alter Ego, and you're not going to be able to do anything about it until next turn when you're ready again, you probably have a threat problem now. Her signature nemesis minion is Callisto. She has five hit points and elite and warlock traits. She does one scheme and three attack, and she has quick strike, so she's going to do that three attack right away. And as a forced interrupt, when you reveal knife fight, give Callisto a tough status. Man, quick strike can really mess you up. If you've just taken a calculated hit from the villain, knowing that you're going to be able to still have a few hit points left, and then you draw Shadow of the Past, and this comes out, and she hits you, Three's a lot. Leader of the Morlocks is her side scheme. It only has two threat per identity, so it's not too tough to get rid of, but until you do, its amplify icon is going to give each boost an extra boost symbol. And when you do defeat it, you have to find a knife fight and reveal it. Knife fight being a treachery, we're going to take a look at, but it's also the card that gives Callisto a tough status. So if you take care of this first, you have to reveal that, and now she's tough. One copy of Switchblade is next. It attaches to the minion with the highest attack, and it gives that minion plus two to that attack and piercing. Putting Kalisto at a five if it goes on her plus piercing, so tough statuses get discarded before you apply the damage. Ooh. And finally, two copies of this knife fight we've been hearing so much about. In Alter Ego, it's just going to surge into another card, but in hero form, the enemy with the highest attack value is going to do that much damage to you then you'll do your attack value back. And remember, if you draw this and Kalisto has the highest attack value and it goes on her, she's going to get the tough status. So when you do your damage back, you're just going to get rid of that tough. So it's just going to be her hitting you. On to her aspect card, Storm came with a leadership deck. Up first is Havoc in the style of Alex Summers. He's a four-cost ally with three hit points and the X-Men trait. He does one thwart and two attack, but that attack has no consequential damage. However, when he attacks, discard the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon, add 
one to his attack and consequential damage. Four is kind of a lot for an ally that you don't really know what you're going to be getting out of him. He, he might do five damage and bounce, or he might get lucky and do a lot of little shots. That's... That's a tough call. Mirage, played by Danny Moonstar, is next. She costs three for two hit points, two thwart, one attack, and psionic and X-Men traits. As a response, after she enters play, choose an enemy whose scheme is less than Mirage's thwart and stun that enemy. Her natural thwart is only at a two, so that's going to be pretty limiting on the enemies that this is going to be able to target. However, if you pay for her using effective leadership and if you have danger room in play and you're able to immediately put danger room training on her when she enters play, before you take a look at the enemies, you might be able to get that up to three or even four, which is certainly better and certainly makes it more likely that you're going to have a target to stun. Or, and hear me out here, just take Mockingbird. Next is Gentle, as played by Nesno Abidemi. He costs three for three hit points in the X-Men trait. He does one thwart and three attack, but that attack gets an additional consequential damage if it's against the villain. Three attack in leadership is really cool, especially if you are getting danger room training on him immediately, getting him to four attack. Using that against a minion is not going to come up as much as using it against the villain, but you can always use teamwork or in Aggression Cyclops, you can use team strike with him and not have to take that consequence damage and then you just get that big attack for free. That's pretty cool. Pixie is a two-cost ally as played by Megan Gwynn, which is the name of someone I went to high school with, but this isn't her. She's a person, like a, a real person. She has two hit points, does one thwart and two attack, though that attack does two consequential damage. She has aerial and X-Men traits, and as a response, after you play her from hand, add an X-Men ally from your discard pile to your hand. Great to stick into a deck if there is a key ally that you want to run into more times that has, like, a response when they enter play that's really great. Or if you throw danger room training on her, she can do that attack a couple of times before she goes. If nothing else, she's a two-cost chump block that gives you a resource back. Then we get three copies of Uncanny X-Men, a three-cost support with a team trait, max one team per player. Each X-Men ally gets plus one hit point. If all your allies have the X-Men trait, X-Men allies cost one fewer resource to put into play. Uh-oh, every X-Men ally just got substantially better. That means Pixie is more or less free. You pay one to put her out and then you draw a card from your discard pile. That's amazing. The basic Colossus comes in now at two because he costs four, but you already get a discount if you're playing an X-Men. This is going to give you an additional discount. That makes him way better. Leadership skill is a one cost upgrade of which we get three copies. It has the skill trait and uses three leadership counters and there's a max of one per player. When an ally makes a basic thwart or attack action, discard a leadership counter to give that thwart or attack plus one. Awesome to use in Storm when she has Thunderstorm in play and everybody's getting plus one to their attack already. Really cool in Cyclops if he lays down exploit weakness, say on the villain and now everybody is doing more damage to that target and you play this so they're doing more damage. And it doesn't exhaust, so you could use it on three ally attacks in the same turn if you wanted to. Then we get three copies of a one-cost event, To Me, My X-Men. It's a tactic that you can only play if you have the X-Men trait. As a hero, search the top five cards of your deck for an X-Men ally and put it into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the phase, add it to your hand. The effect is cool. The name of the card is... Not... Is that the X-Men version of Avengers Assemble? It's not good. But again, cool effect. It lets you bring in an ally. If it has a response, it gets to do the response and then still possibly activate. And then if it's still around, you get to bring it back to your hand. So it's better than Sneak Attack, which makes you discard it. Forge is a two-cost basic ally with the X-Men trait, two hit points, and ones in each of his stats. As a response, after he enters play, search your deck and discard piles for an X-Men or X-Force spoilers, support, and add it to your hand. Cerebro, Danger Room, Utopia, the X-Mansion, the X-Jet. If you can get this guy into play early and just keep bringing him into play with some of those leadership cards especially, you can get your entire support system set up in a few turns. And last up is three copies of Hangar Bay. It's a one cost protection location support, max one per player. After an ally defends against an attack and is not defeated, exhaust this card to ready that ally. If you're running an X-Men hero and the ally you use this on has the X-Men protection training, that's gonna give them plus three to their hit points. So you can use 
an ally so many times before you have to worry about consequential damage taking them out, so readying them is awesome. The weather deck is really cool, or stack. The weather pile of cards is really cool. It is so satisfying to give all of your allies plus one to their attack with Thunderstorm, have them do their attack, and then flip to Blizzard so that when the villain activates, it's doing one less attack. And that approach will work in any aspect. Justice allies tend to thwart much better than their attacks, but Thunderstorm will make them do both pretty well. In Aggression, you can pair that with Boot Camp to give all of your allies an additional plus one, plus there's the X-Men Training card, which gives them an additional attack. Wolverine, with Boot Camp and Thunderstorm and the Aggression Training, is going to be swinging at a six. I mean, you combine that with Team Strike? Come on. She can also fly once you find her cape, so that means aerial cards are now in play. Dive Bomb is very fun, and with Storm's Crown generating whatever resource is on the weather card in play, you can also pretty much guarantee that you're going to be able to use a mental or wild resource, so you can use Honed Technique on that Dive Bomb. Protection might not seem like an obvious choice because of her one starting defense, but if you give plus one attack to all three copies of Multiple Man, ooh. That's great. And in general, attack events don't really care what your attack stat is, so you could also just lay out Blizzard and just hide behind a meat shield just laying out attack events. That's going to do it for Storm. Hit the like. There's a link in the description if you'd like to help support these videos, and then get off my lawn. The Grouchy Nerd.